Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about some introductory um, understanding of metal casting. Metal casting is an important process for manufacturing and it has wide variety of application and it has uh, started uh, maybe say 5000 to 6000 years ago by human different human civilizations and still it is relevant because of lot many changes are taking place and it has uh, industrial application related to many product development. So, these uh, video tells about that with a ladle very very uh, high temperature in the fluidic state of some molten metal is pouring into the sand mold with an cope and drag combinations with a ladle it is putting into the sprue and according to that it is just entering into the cavities of the mold pre prepared and after solidification the product will come out of all those sand mold by destroying those expendable sand mold and on the basis of that the product will be preliminary product will be manufactured. So, the definition of casting process that it is a process in which molten metal flows by gravity or other force into a mold where it solidifies in the shape of the mold cavity. The fluidity, the advantage of fluidity is employed so that the fluid material can take the shape of a cavity and that is why people do not have to be bothered about the different complex shapes because of the fluidity it will enter in the fluidic state and once it is solidified so that kind of uh, cavity conjugate profile will be generated. So, it is very very handy in order to generate different curvatures and different kind of geometric shape utilizing the fluidity of the material and that is why the metal has to be uh, heated uh, beyond the melting point so that it becomes fluid and fluidic advantage has to be taken care of in terms of giving different shapes. The term, term casting is also applied to the part that is made by this process. So, product is also called casting and it is one of the oldest shaping process dating even back to 6000 years maybe the initial materials are gold and then copper and bronze and other part. So, even before 6000 years human civilization are well aware of the fact that if it the metals are melted and in above the melting point it will be in fluidic nature. So, if it is cast in different kind of cavities then we can pretty well get a different complex and contour of the product which is not easy to machine with the relevant tools and tackles or sometimes it is very hazardous or sometimes it is taking lot of effort and cost. So, that is the beauty of the casting process. Next we will be discussing about those classification of casting process and this casting processes are mainly divided with three class one is casting of metals metals have a very uh, important role as a materials in terms of application the other one is glass working and the third one is gaining lot of importance in today's world that is processing of polymers and polymer matrix composites this is also new material and they have lot of favorable properties and one can play with the properties and that is why it is becoming more and more relevant in different kind of applications. But the classical uh, casting of metals are still relevant still lot of products are produced by the casting process. So, these casting metals of uh, these process is subdivided into two classes one is expendable mold casting and the second one is permanent mold casting. Expendable mold casting means that every time the mold has to be sacrificed. So, that is why it is known as sacrificial mold based casting. That means 
every time the new mold has to be prepared. So, the word expendable word is there, but it is in case of mold and that can be subdivided into one is uh, non-sacrificial pattern that is wooden pattern used many a times and some is sacrificial pattern that is investment casting. So, the investment casting every time we have to sacrifice the pattern also. And these expendable mold casting a good uh, chunk is associated with sand casting where molding material is predominantly sand and apart from sand other processes are there. Sand is a very popular good amount of expendable mold casting is mold is made of sand and the other processes are also there but their percentage is less. The other variety is permanent mold casting that is the example is die casting. So, die cavities are there it is made of high strength temperature resistant alloys so that they can withstand the extra heat associated with those uh, heat of the molten metal, but very good surface finish will be there. Then the question may be asked that why every casting is not permanent mold casting because many of the metals the, because of their high melting point it is not easy to go for those dye and dye will be requiring more challenging type of materials and some technological hiccups and issues are there. So, that is why permanent mold casting is limited application depending on the feasibility of the process, but otherwise very good surface finish and dimensional accuracies can be obtained from this permanent mold casting. And uh, the subdivisions of the processing of polymers are uh, there and they are also um, have extensive extrusion and related process. Another one is very, very popular process that is known as injection molding. Many of the com plastic components are produced by injection molding and many other special purpose associated with PMC that is uh, polymer matrix composites and other kind of process and they are extending their applications in many ways because of their versatility in terms of the properties. What is the uh, capabilities and advantages of the casting process? They are many. It can be used to create complex part geometries. Complex geometries are always the issue, always the challenge of machining. One has to find it out the different classes of machine tools to generate the different classes of surfaces. But in case of uh, casting these kind of complexities can be dealt with uh, ease. There is a solution for all those things because the fluidity of the material is relevant and if the cavities can be prepared uh, according to the product we want then definitely the for fluid flow of those metals in molten state can give the products without much hassles and we can generate all sorts of shapes both external and internal also. And some casting process are capable of producing parts to net shape like say investment casting very very close shapes that can be produced by investment casting and dimensional accuracy and surface finish also great. In sand casting that may be is not that great we have to do lot many challenging uh, post processing operations after the casting, but in case of some casting die casting and these investment casting the accuracy and surface finish are very much acceptable. And no further manufacturing operations are required to achieve the required geometry and dimension of the part very specific to those kind of casting. So, that are the very advantageous process, but they have their other kind of cost implications. And other casting processes are near net shape for which some additional shape processing is required in order to achieve accurate dimensions and all those things because we cannot achieve all those certain dimensions with certain precision. So, some post processing activities are required. Advantages uh, again continued it can be used to produce very large parts very big parts that can be made of the sand mold and other things we do not have to go for very big machineries that can be used all those uh, sand cavities with 
extensive part so that is very useful scalability is uh, favorable and the casting weighing more than 100 tons also can be meant so that is again the voluminous scalability can be achieved which cannot be possible in conventional manufacturing processes like machine tool we have to have some very big machines and sometimes it is not there so in order to make very big part and other things casting is possible and the casting process can be performed on any metal that can be heated to the liquid state if any metal can go to the liquid state it is just suitable for casting so that kind of applicability is very extensive and some casting methods are quite suited to mass production we can use all those products in huge number of pieces of manufacturing so that is also a favorable story in terms of the application of casting process but there are uh, definite disadvantages what are they they are also um, problem with that and they include limitations on mechanical properties one cannot play with the mechanical properties directional solidification and other things has to be bothered porosity so because of the gas outlet and other kind of issues porosity is always a problem and porosity will make those casting the strength of the casting goes down because of the porosity poor dimensional accuracy because of the solidification and cooling there are dimensional change in different direction depending on the geometries and that is why dimensional accuracy is a questionable one one has to put forward much uh, extra material in order to take care of all those marginal or uh, take care of those uh, measurement related uncertainties and surface finish also because of the sand and other things are loosely bound at the periphery the surface finish is uh, not very smooth in order to do that we have to keep some extra material and then run it out with those machining and maybe grinding so that we can get good surface finish without post processing we cannot expect from conventional sand casting good surface finish but the surface finish in die casting and investment castings are excellent and safety hazards because we are doing all sorts of things at elevated temperature there are always the problems related to safety and when processing hot melted metals some some precautionary measures are there and air flow all sorts of things and environmentally not a very friendly process so we have to take care of all those hazards in terms of getting things at elevated temperature and this is the the form of the mold one is open mold left side very simple in terms of construction it is a container shape of the desired parts so if these kind of products are manufactured uh, from casting it is just cakewalk so no hassles in terms of positioning and other part of it so create the cavity with the pattern remove the pattern and in this cavity put the molten metal and it will take the shape but that is not very true in the right part of it so the flask is there what is flask it is the combination of cope and drag cope is the upper part of those castings and drag is the lower part of the castings and by just opening and uh, those things we can generate those cavities and after putting these materials we will put those cope and drag and they will be filled with sand and according to that whenever the everything is done they can be just parted enough and removal of the tactful removal of the pattern and once it is removed the cavity remains there and on the basis of these cavities and utilizing that cavities the molten metal is poured into and we can get all those complex and complicated geometry without ease and that uh, molten metal will enter into the system through a gating system passages leading into those cavity and these are called rana from this pouring cup and then this sprue and then with a with a gating system with the runner it will enter into the mold and it has to see that every nook and corner of the mold cavity is fulfilled with the molten metal if it is not done then the casting will be straight away rejected and in between cope and drag there is a different kind of parting sand has been given in order to provide the parting line 
so that uh, this is not jeopardized at the time of the withdrawal of all those patterns after casting. And the risers are there in order to see that whether the nook and corner of those molten metal is hungry of the molten metal or not. So, riser is a good selection in terms of a sensor, crude uh, sensor which is a mechanical one and which can tell that whether the casting deposition is proper or not. So, now we come to the numericals related to pouring calculations and mold sprue it will be used at the some part of the Barrelli's equation very simple straightforward formula will be used and the mold sprue sprue means where through which the molten metal is poured in and is 20 centimeter long and the cross sectional area is at base and that is 2.5 centimeter square 20 centimeter long and the cross sectional area is 2.5 centimeter square and this proof feeds a horizontal runner leading to a mold cavity whose volume is 1560 centimeter cube. Sprue feeds a runner and runner also have some volume and that volume is expressed 1560. So, what we have to determine? We have to determine the velocity of the molten metal at the base of the sprue and the volume of the rate of flow velocity of the molten metal is known so that the turbulence will be there or not. Turbulence is not at all wanted in case of modern sand casting process. Volume rate of flow what will be the volume rate representation in terms of the rate of flow and the time to fill up the mould what time it will take to fill up the mould and all those things can be calculated. Uh, with a simulation type of platform without going through the practical processes. Let us see what is the solution. The solution is easy because the velocity of those things are root over of 2 g h that is coming from the Barlow is 1. So, v square by 2 is equal to uh, 2 g h. So, um, it will be it will be g h multiplication and v square will be uh, v square will be 2 g h and uh, the subsequent final representation will be v is equal to root over of 2 g h and it comes out to be 198.1 centimeter per second. The volumetric flow rate they can again very easy because we have to come out with those uh, velocity along with that the cross sectional area we will multiply and that comes out to be 2.5 into 90 198.8 is equal to 495 centimeter cube per second that is the volume flow. And last but not the least required to fill up a mold cavity of 1560 centimeter cube is the flow rate and what is the flow rate here? Uh, 0 0.002 into this, this with division of 495, then we can get the flow rate as 3.2 seconds. So, that is required, that is required 1560 divided by uh, 495 and that comes up to be 3.2 seconds. So, that is the time required to fill the mold cavity of those kind of casting. And one can see this curve pouring temperature curve it is started then liquid cooling and all those things the temperature is coming down and freezing point it will just solidify and this part is known as local solidification. So, different strategies of solidification while pouring also some some temperature is taken out of it, but uh, clear demarcation and other things sometimes efficient. And whenever we are dealing with the liquid cooling and other uh, uh, methods, we will find it out it is the method of uh, method of uh, appropriately contraction and with those liquid cooling and the next stage is freezing begins. So, in both two cases there are uh, possibilities of uh, contraction and that has to be meticulously compensated. And after that freezing completed, it will go for the freezing temperature, then solid cooling and according to that all those things are there. So, there are different stages, <coughs> sorry different uh, depending on the material those things will be just understood and according to that the strategy of cooling will be fixed up. The 
most of the part introductory part of the slides and according to that we can uh, continue um, our casting process whatever we have discussed in detail the classifications the methodology and then we have discussed the um, cooling uh, pattern in terms of the time and that is absolutely necessary to understand to produce good casting process. Thank you.